This, this is the ABQ Business Podcast with your host, Jason Rigby. Each week, we'll interview visionary business leaders to inspire the creative power and spirit that's in every entrepreneur. Discussing strengths, weaknesses, strategies, systems, and the problems we can all solve together for a new future for local small business. What is up, guys? Super excited today. I've got the president of New Mexico Angels. This isn't the Blue Angels, guys. Um, This is New Mexico Angels. It's an an investing company. It's been around for 20 plus years. And I've had Drew on the show before, and we had a really interesting conversation. And I wanted to have him back on. And I know now he's the president of New Mexico Angels. So Drew Tolchin, how are you doing today? Thanks, man. I'm doing great, Jason. I love the uh, Blue Angels analogy. I think that's awesome. I'd like to do it again. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, I always think of uh, as a child, uh, we used to go to the air shows, you know, and so I, every time I hear the word angels, for some reason, you know, it's been the the whole idea of those, you know, just seeing those amazing um, aircraft and the pilots and the dedication and all that that is with that. But I kind of want to get into if we can, I, I want everyone in New Mexico, this is going to be a really local episode, and, and I think it's going to be great. Um to, if you could kind of, I know you took over president of New Mexico Angels. What is New Mexico Angels and, and why is it so important to New Mexico? Yeah, uh, thanks for this opportunity. And again, thanks to the work you do with startups in Albuquerque and beyond. I think it's really valuable. And New Mexico Angels fits into that. It's a 20-year-old organization. And what we do is we bring investors together to work collectively to help our startups and our growing businesses with equity investment. So if you think about Silicon Valley and kind of the stereotype of the high growth business, uh, but there's a lot of other ways we can help with a Rolodex, with connections. That's the benefit of uh, the smallness of New Mexico. And we really want to see more be more here uh, in our fair state. So when you look at New Mexico in particular, and we look at uh, technology, and I know, you know, a lot of people could uh, look at it in a negative aspect. We are seeing these big companies like Netflix and stuff like that coming in. But when, when you're looking at innovation and we're, you know, and I know we get a lot from the labs, you know, um, where, where is it, where does it look like it's coming from and what are you seeing for the future when it comes uh, to tech companies? Yeah. Uh, let me first talk about what is a startup or a high growth business, right? because you mentioned technology and Netflix, and certainly those are the ones that are better known and better thought of. But what are most of our businesses here in New Mexico? There are things down the street, there are things that help you make your life happen. So, you know, a company like Tao's Bakes or Electric Playhouse, which I was a part of, you know, these are companies that help make your life available and better. So we also have technology, right? Um, so we've got a couple of folks um, out of the labs, both say DN Lanel and then down in NMSU with Arrowhead Innovation Fund. So there is certainly a lot of technology. There's a lot of computer startups. There's a lot of software. Uh, there's health products. So those are part of innovation. But we're also super psyched to see food, our local food systems. We're psyched with Vara, uh, wine and spirits. We've got a high growth with our great beer and brewery companies. So innovation is helping our entrepreneurs to be able to get the parts they need of the puzzle uh, to put together a real view. So when you're looking at um, like a brewery coming in, um, you know, and, and, and you know, as well as I know, we, you've heard this analogy, basically every company now, especially in 2021, is a tech company. Um, you know, you can't operate, uh, you know, as a company if you don't have that uh, view. When, when you look at a brewery or you're looking at a bakery, how is that? You know, when you guys look at at funding something like that or investors are getting involved, you know, how do you look at that? Is it is is there like a filter for, you know, is this uh, helping this local community? I mean, when you guys are are starting to look at things like this, because I I imagine, you know, you could get hundreds of applications for, you know, bakeries or restaurants, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, really good point. So first of all, we support all entrepreneurs, all business owners here in New Mexico. Hats off to you. In these awful days of COVID, uh, we want all of you to be successful to help our state. Uh, The Angels isn't always the best place. We have what's called ecosystem partners, so other folks doing small business assistance. So, for example, we've got SCORE that provides uh, free assistance. We've got our small business development centers, which are government funded. 
We have what's called CDFIs, which are non-bank lenders. So West, for example, is a well-known organization, works statewide, helping entrepreneurs at all steps and also with loans, right? So that is a place we can always suggest people to help. Uh, When we're talking about angel investment, what we want is people writing a check to invest to then make sure that they're earning a return. So there needs to be growth. And not all companies are going to grow or want to grow. And that's great. So we just want to find the right match to the right service and support and Rolodex and system, depending on what the business is looking for. And and when you're looking at uh, a business that's coming in, like, I, I mean, I imagine you guys have criteria where you're looking. I know growth, you would say, is one. Um, but what are some of the things that you look at? Yeah, really good question. Um, and so, you know, our website has a bunch of info. You can go to nmangels.com, New Mexico Angels. And you can email us info at nmangels.com. And we've got events there. We've got a bunch of events. And so a great way for anyone to get in touch and someone who wants to learn about investing and being an angel uh, and being accredited, or if you've got a a business startup or you're growing, uh, we've got these office hours and my great board, which is a, a bunch of community people volunteering their time, have signed up to take shifts. And anyone can come in and learn about us and get a chat with an expert to give some good feedback. So that's a really great community service that we can offer twice a month. And those dates are on our website. Um, if you want me to, I can recite some specific dates. But uh, if you want to just point to the website, we can do that too. Yeah, no, I think that would be good, that nmangels.com. Now, because uh, uh, you just mentioned education. Yes. So, you know, when I'm looking at education and and you're providing this education to the community, what are some of the things like examples that you guys ha- have done in the past and that you're looking at doing now? Yeah. So we're doing a monthly what we call Tutor Tuesdays. So after lunch, um, you know, we've got an hour here. It's a quick hour where we have an expert come in and share a topic of interest to angel investing, how to invest and how to work with entrepreneurs. Uh, We had a guy out of Texas whose name is Hall Martin with 10 Capital Group, and he did something called 3X and 3. And that's the idea that, um, you know, maybe an equity investment of buying ownership in a company isn't the right move for somebody. And so what if we looked at different ways of doing investment? And what if instead we are as investors, we wrote an investment check and the deal was we write a check to you. And the agreement is you pay us back 3x and then we're out. So we put a dollar in and then over time, you're going to pay 3x back. Um, And from a debt deal, that might sound like a lot of money. But for an equity deal, if you think your company's going to be worth a lot, that's a really good deal. And it's a really interesting way to provide an alternative to have an angel investor connect with an owner in a new way. So when you're looking at, um, you know, because I, I went on your website and I saw that there was, you know, like boot camps and equity, you know, seminars and different things like that. Um, with COVID going on and all that, is it um, one of those things where a lot of stuff is done on Zoom or, or, and I know you guys, you know, obviously practice social distancing and you have, you know, people on shift and stuff like that. How does that work if somebody may be a little fearful in coming in and, and they want to have a conversation with you? Yeah, we're, we're completely virtual at this point in time which, you know, for New Mexico, we're all used to being personable, right? And we're used to doing things, you know, show me and being, look people in the eyes and and handshakes and, you know, safety has got to be first right now. Um, It's no use trying to grow a business if you can't, uh, if you're going to get people sick. So we're on virtual, we're online. Um, It's not the best, but we're making, we're trying to help as many businesses as we can and build relationships. So it's really about people connecting with other people. And we'll do that by phone, by video. If people have internet connectivity problems, we'll look at other ways to communicate. Uh, and then we'll be back together as soon as we can um, with mass social distancing. We'll try to do some stuff outside when it's warm enough um, and really bringing people together and fostering a community so that the proverbial village can raise the child. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Now, whenever, um, you know, you whenever I think of something that is a group of people and like you said, they're volunteering their time and then you look at these experts, the, the people that are on your board, the people that you've assembled as a team, what is what what do they look like? You know, who are they? Um, it, it, you know, and and how can they help someone if someone's kind of hesitant to whether they want to have a conversation with you or not? Yeah, yeah. Um... Let's see, what's the best way to answer that? So first of all, 
angel investing is not going to be for everyone, right? And people are well welcome to come ask us questions, learn about it. If people would like to be investing themselves, uh, there's an education effort there so they can earn money and they don't just write a check and poof, it's gone. And then they don't they can't afford to do anything else. So we really want to educate, help and support people who would like to learn about this. If it's an entrepreneur who's either got an existing enterprise going, an existing business, or they think they've got a concept, then I think joining us for an office hour uh, is an easy way to spend 20, 30 minutes. Uh, you know, my board, these are professionals. We've got doctors, we've got lawyers, we've got people who have done real estate. We've got people who are part of these um, support organizations. And, you know, they want to do their best to see New Mexico, New Mexicans and uh, commercial activity here, uh, because I think we all are tired of the old song of thank goodness for Mississippi, meaning that our statistics are so bad that we're 49th out of 50th. Yeah. And, and, you know, as far as when, when you're looking at entrepreneurship, what are some of the things that you're seeing, um, you know, especially now, um, you know, full time in this field and looking and I know you've you've been doing this for a while. But what are some of the things that you're seeing that entrepreneurs when they're first starting out or they're looking for funding, some of the mistakes that they're doing that you're seeing? Mm, great question. Fun question. So first of all, you asked about criteria earlier and on our website under entrepreneurs, the people who are interested in in getting investors can look at suggestions for investment criteria. Um, and so there's a sense there, you know, you mentioned technology growth. Um, and the other big thing is, is leadership. Uh, a lot of times in New Mexico, uh, we have folks who um, are working so hard that they're always selling all the time and they're mm -hmm. not complete people. They're not a complete business. Um, we really want to encourage people to take care of themselves, be healthy, uh, but then also to build a team. You can't, you can't do it by yourself on your own shoulders. So you got to have other people around you. And um, to your question about kind of what's needed, what are the mistakes? Um, you know, what I try to do is how would you want to be treated, right? The golden rule and treat people, treat investors, treat possible advisors that same way, right? Um, most of the people I know don't want to be pitched to. They don't want to be sold at, right? Mm, do yes. you really like it when someone starts a conversation just like, yelling at you about a product and how great it is. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so start about it like being a human being. New Mexicans are great at that. Ask people who they are, what they want. Listen. Um, listen and don't always just talk. Um, and then when the person across from you is asking you questions, make sure you have clear answers about what your product is, what the market is, and why, what your unfair advantage is. How can you build a moat and be different and special? Uh, and so those are things that some entrepreneurs don't always think through in advance because they're so wed to their idea and just kind of selling it to market. Now, now, whenever you're looking at, um, you know, because I, I, you hear, you know, a lot of people and they'll come up and, um, you know, to be frank, and they, they'll say, you know, I'm looking at, I've got this great idea, then I'm looking at, at getting um, this investing. And I know you were talking about leadership and stuff like that, but there's a process that has to happen. You know, you can't just, you know, hop online and, and submit, you know, you, you did an LLC through New Mexico and then submit for funding. What are what are some of the things that you're looking for, like the maturity wise of things before someone submits something like they've been in business for, you know, a few years? They I know you said talking about having a team and stuff like that. But what are some of the key factors that drive, um, you know, investors to invest in you? Yeah. So the biggest thing is trust. Right. And trust is formed between people. So um, you mentioned a lot of factors that I think are really important. If you are somebody who can point towards having had successes, if not in this business, in your life, right? Um, or you've had failures and you've learned from them. That's something that's going to, as an investor myself, I'm going to consider as de-risky, right? Um, mm. And that's why I mentioned a team because um, no matter how talented a CEO is, he or she or they aren't going to be able to do everything and they're not going to be good in everything and they shouldn't be. So do you know your own blind spots? Do you know your own weaknesses? And have you sought out people who are different from you to help complement that? Um, and then the other point is certainly, you know, if a company already has a product that's in the marketplace and selling stuff, 
Uh, that's certainly easier, but uh, an angel has to get earlier than that sometimes. So while that's an ideal, uh, certainly we'll be willing to talk to people when they're earlier, but it has to be viable because if I write a check and you don't get anywhere and you go to Tahiti or you spend the money, and you got nothing. Uh, none of us is going to keep earning a paycheck or get our money back. And that doesn't right. help us advance what we're trying to do. together. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I've noticed, especially, you know, when you're looking at um, angel investors, and I know you have that side also, what are the ways, it, you know, I mean, we have over 30,000 business leaders that listen to this um, um, show what are some of the ways if somebody wants to to look at getting a return or wants to, you know, help out local New Mexico and maybe they want to, you know, become, and I know you have that on your website, become an angel. What are some of the things that you guys are looking for with that? Um, you know, what comes into my mind, Jason, is a little bit of humility. You know, we want people to be confident. We want people to to know the things they know, but uh, people who come in and can't ask questions, can't reveal a little bit of vulnerability, that they don't know everything. I think those folks end up being a little limited in this area. Um, you know, I learn stuff every day from entrepreneurs, from other angels, from other capital providers. Um, and I need to actually be good at questions and I need to get better at questions uh, so I can understand the people, so I can understand what they're trying to do, so I can understand their product. And all those are important factors in being able to do angel investing. Um, and you want to bring a group of people together because an angel, by definition, is uh, one person. And they usually have modest means, right? So even if they're wealthy by American standards and Mexican standards, what they're able to invest in any single company is not going to be enough uh, to get the job done. And so we need a group of people and we need an association, which legally we are to come together and share uh, and use our Rolodexes, use our connections and use a collective capital to move, to, to move the dial and make a difference. So, so an angel investor group or, or an association like you guys are, cause I want people to understand this it is a group uh, of, you know, maybe business leaders, investors, and um, you know, I, I'm trying to make it really simple so that everyone understands, you know, what's going on. And they mean, like you said, they don't want to take all the risk, and invest, you know, they may not have a million dollars to invest in one company, but they have 250000 And then they're able to um, take that money, um, put it in the group together, use resources and, and, and try to help that entrepreneur and bring them along. And so it's like a win-win for both. Yeah, exactly. And it's, sometimes it's not even two fifty. dollars uh, We just talked to a great company called Patrick Soda. Uh, some of you might know, seen it in stores and Whole Foods. Um, and they're finishing up a capital raise. Um, and I'm legally not allowed to talk specifics, but uh, they need a modest amount, less than a hundred thousand. Mm. And so, you know, we can bring. They already have a bunch of investors. If we can get a few more, uh, and possibly some other uh, capital sources of capital, then they can hire another uh, sales and marketing person and really kill it. So uh, these are incremental steps. That again, uh, there's a lot of people who can be part of the solution. And if you haven't done investing before, let's learn about it. If you're an entrepreneur that needs capital, let's understood what type of capital you need and who it might come from. And let's work together uh, so that we can see more of these businesses succeed in our state. Yeah, because uh, you know as well as I do, everybody. When we always think of uh, investing, we're always thinking of the the idea of money and and getting money to help my company so that it can grow. And we forget about the resources that are available through that same group. And, uh, um, yeah. you know, and, and resources sometimes can be more valuable than a check. So, you know, like w whenever you're looking at resources and some of the things that, and I know education is one of them, but what are some of the things that you're seeing, you know, and I know some of these you can't talk about, but specifically, what are some of the things that you're seeing where, you know, support and resources has helped an entrepreneur? Uh, let's see if I can come up with a good solution. So um, our friends at Electric Playhouse, right, um, which their, clo their Albuquerque location is closed, uh, which is it was sad, and, and they hope to be open soon. Uh, but what they were thinking about is, is their big thing is it's, they got a restaurant, and then they've got these digital projection games. So you can, you know, if you're a young person or an old person, you can do these projected games. So in COVID, it's actually a relatively safe thing. And so they wanted to go to Texas to help the mall owners in these dying malls in Texas, 
be able to provide an, um, a, a thing that could draw business again. Um, and so through the angel network, angels who have already invested in them and through the New Mexico angels, we're able to use our Rolodexes and get in touch with people in, in Texas who have these real estates uh, and also might be angel investors themselves. And through the triangulation of, of connectivity, uh, we're able to help this New Mexico company, which is headquartered here, which has an Albuquerque location, to then grow into other communities. Yeah, that see, see, that's the stuff that that a lot of people that you can't put a value on, you know, because now, I mean, if you're looking specifically at that company, you know, I mean, it, it, as we're seeing restaurants and stuff like that, and movie theaters, and you know, uh, entertainment, you know, uh, struggling, and then now there's a resource that is available to give someone hope. You know, and, and I, I think that is what, because uh, the saddest thing that I see is someone that has an amazing idea uh, and you're just like, you know, this is, this is amazing and they're executing on it, but they feel like they don't have support. They feel like they're all by themselves. They're alone. You know, they're just getting told no all the time, you know, and it's like, why, you know, and then, you know, it's like, why am I getting told no all the time? You know, and somebody, you know, like, uh, like your, your group, New Mexico angels could come in there and say, well, you know, he, here's your holes. Here's where you're missing out in. Yeah, your presentation is good, this, 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 but let's look at, at sharpening up this. Let's look at, you know, you, I asked you this question on this and you had no idea on it. You know, and those are the things that I think that, um, you know, I, I was talking to someone um, and they had no idea on marketing, you know, and I was like, you know, you have an amazing idea, a great company, you're selling it, but, you know, you're going to have to bring somebody in, whether it's part time or, you know, quarter time or whatever, you know, to get to get a marketing plan together. And, you know, it's just interesting to me to see that. And I don't know if you're seeing things like that, um, especially with the the resources side and the support and, and mentorship. Yeah, I, I really like the way you're putting that. Let me let me share a couple of resources. So, um, you know, I'm a disciple of Guy Kawasaki. He did The Art of the Start. This is a mm -hmm. guy who was early at Apple, right? He was a chief designer. And he's really good at marketing. He's also really good at what's called a pitch deck or presentation, right? Uh, stereotypically done in PowerPoint or some other mechanism. Um, and so that would be a resource that I would suggest people check out. I think he's got a lot of good things to say. He's pithy. He's short. It's not painful. Um, so that would be a resource that I would suggest. Uh, to your idea of uh, people saying no, you know, the first startup that I was a part of, we did 130 approaches to potential investors. Mm. Um, and you want to guess how many yeses we ended up with out of 130? <laughs> one. <laughs> well, um, one who didn't know us. We ended up with four, but three already knew us. Um, and, you know, so we ended up with one, essentially. And, you know, if you think about DM, direct mail response, right? That's gone down in America with the advent of so much social media. But statistically, you know, that was 2%. So, um, you know, how do we improve our odds? How do we how do we limit the number of coffees, which are even harder to COVID? And so I really liked what you said about, you know, people are saying no to you. First of all, that's exhausting and debilitating. Uh, and nobody wants, you know. So, you know, if we're an entrepreneur, how can we think about reshaping the conversation so that the person across from you doesn't have to say no, right? How do we build relationships? How do we build trust? How do we ask for advice instead of money and think about what they can offer us and what they can talk to us about? So that's number one. And then number two, if they're saying no to you, why are they saying no to you? Just like you said, um, and being, um, I think, um, vulnerable enough or strong enough to be able to say, hey, um, give me feedback, give me honesty here. like. No is fine, but I want to understand why so that I can improve and maybe um, it's a fit for the next person or figure out next time I come back to you, uh, maybe I've changed the things you're saying no about and you can move to a yes. And, you know, whenever you're looking at, uh, you know, especially, for, you know, for me, whenever I, I talk to these um you know, young entrepreneurs and, and they have these amazing ideas and they're coming in and, and they just like, some of them don't know where to start. So I kind of want to reverse engineer this if you don't mind um, and, and say, let, let's say somebody says, okay, I've got an amazing idea. I've got this going on. I've got a patent. I've got, you know, I, I've got a lot of things put together, but um, I do have a little bit of finances. You know, I've got a hundred grand or whatever. 
what are what are would you want to have like have them contact you guys to have a, a you know a, a quick dialogue with them is that the best way to approach it is it and i, I know i know you guys have the uh, where you can submit you know submit directly online yeah um, but you know because i i want to make sure people are understanding drew the the gap in between from that minute of of having that presentation or that that call or conversation um to you know making that so, you know, to submitting it. Yeah. 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 So, um, the honest truth is the more baked something is, uh, the easier it is to engage with us. So, um, again, if somebody's got products already, if you've got a legal registration, if you've got some IP, some intellectual property or product, and if that stuff's already figured out, then it's a little easier for us to engage and react and respond and connect. Uh, if people are a little earlier in the process, uh, they're very welcome to drop us a note. But again, if it's not a startup high growth opportunity where an investor can earn a return, uh, it's just not a fit for us. And what we would do is we would help connect them to another partner of ours or another uh, folks in the ecosystem. So, for example, uh, West uh, has some trainings, right? And they're doing it virtually. They're statewide. And so um, we always want to support people. But, you know, we've got a product, too, right? We're a membership association around investing. And so somebody has to have an investment that we can earn money on. Um, and if somebody's a little early, then we can give them some advice, maybe refer them back out to a partner of ours. Um, and then maybe we can see them along as they come back on their journey when they come back to us. Yeah. And, you know, I, I know you guys also offer sponsorships and I know the hospitals, you know, are doing that and, and you've got some law firms and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, if, if somebody's wanting to to be a part of that, do you guys offer that? Do you guys offer where someone, you know, um, can sponsor with you and you guys put their, you know, on your marketing material and stuff? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we're very supportive of people becoming members of all types. So angels are members, but we have a professional category, right, with the CPAs, with the lawyers, with the marketeers, uh, where the fractional executives can come join us so that they can be supportive of this ecosystem and they can meet startups and high growth companies. Um, and then we just added new this year uh, an entrepreneurs category so that our entrepreneurs who want to help other entrepreneurs, you know, they've earned some war stripes, uh, some battle scars, and they might be able to help a peer avoid that problem. And then um, I haven't gotten to it yet, Jason. So this is the first time I've mentioned it publicly. Uh, we'd really like to get our next generation, right? Our young people um, mm. and particularly some of our communities that you don't normally see in these circles, right? Um, I'd love to get some Native American relationships. Um, we don't have a lot of African-Americans in our state, but uh, we very much would like to build some relationships. Uh, we don't have enough people with Hispanic, Latinx, um, you know, Mexican, Hispano heritage, and those are the folks who have helped make this state what it is. Um, and so we need to build some bridges. We need to find some connectivity. Um, and I need some help because, I mean, to tell you the honestly, you know, I'm, I, I'm a white guy. Um, right. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a white guy and I've been in this state 12 years and I love it. And it's land of entrapment for me. But, you know, for many people, I think people are still going to see me as an outsider or an interloper. And I think that's respectable. Yeah, no, I, I I love this, and, and and maybe we could stay here for a little bit on the conversation, especially with um the younger generation, um because you know these and, and I just read an article and I think it was on Forbes or something like that, and they were talking about Generation Z, literally being um on the internet from the minute they were you know two years old playing with their mom's phone to watch a YouTube video or something um, till now. So they've literally, all they have known is the internet. And mm. so you have this group of people, I feel, you know, and, and, you know, I get excited because, you know, like uh, in the article they were talking about, um, you know, the biggest issue that they feel that is going on is climate change, you know? And, and so we're looking at this young generation that is, is, is coming up and, and seeing a global world, uh, seeing uh, the issues that are facing the world and, you know, wanting to take responsibility and transparency and have all this technology that they've grown up around, you have to expect that we're going to create some trillion dollar companies out of this young group of, of you know, men and women. Oh, we've got to. And I certainly hope so. Um, the other elements that I think are really fascinating uh, about some of our folks coming up is, um, you know, we've got energy towards making the world a better place. 
And I feel uh, very strongly, fervently about uh, business for good, you know, do Mm. well and do good. And I think that's really possible and increasingly understood by uh, folks coming up even better than I think possibly you and I when we were just trying to to, to find our way. Uh, there's something called a B corporation, which is a benefit yes. corporation or you know good for the world. Um, there are these categories of business and also what's called social enterprise, right? Where you're doing business activities for social value. And I think for the environment, I think for our communities, um, I think for a lot of areas, health, uh, those people with ideas should be encouraged to do that because you don't have to just be Pepsi and Coca-Cola, right? You could right. be uh, Newman's own. Um, you could be a product called Cooley Cooley, which is a woman uh, who went to Africa and found a, um, a green there that is apparently one of the healthiest superfoods. Um, and so, you know, there are macrobiotics. There, there's a lot of things to be done. Uh, cannabis and CBD is growing in our state. Uh, and we hope hemp will be even more. So there's lots of good ideas. What it takes is the hard work. Um, I haven't found a successful entrepreneur that hasn't had to suffer, right? Yes. Um, and really hasn't had to really go to the cliff and look out over and, and scared. Um, and I think that that is the separation of an entrepreneur that people can trust, that people can build relationships with, and somebody who just kind of wants somebody else to the sweat. Yeah, whenever you're, uh, you know, and we'll get into inclusion here in a minute, but whenever you're looking at these young entrepreneurs, um, you know, especially here in, in, and let's stay real local here in New Mexico, um, and that bridge building, and I love that that you mentioned that, you know, and I feel like it has to be, Drew, you know, just to speak from the heart, I feel like it has to be, we have to, you know, take the initiative to build the bridge. And it's like, how do, how do we speak to a, a young entrepreneur, you know, a 20 year old, uh, an early 30 year old and say, yeah, you're going to go through literally some shit and you're going to look over that cliff's edge, like you said, but at the same time, those failures are going to mold you and make you into a successful entrepreneur. Is there, uh, you know, is that something that you're looking at, at, at the future as the president of NM Angels to kind of engage young entrepreneurs? Um. I love the way you're putting this, and and certainly it's something I care about a great deal. You know, I started my career in AmeriCorps, right, which is all about community service. Um, so I, I care about that a great deal. You know, my experience in New Mexico is that our universities have not been the place for that type of entrepreneurship, right? And right. The state is known for a government. It's known for tourism um, and a little bit of extraction, right? Um, and so I think the biggest thing from what you've said that I would like to, to promote is, you know, if you, a person listening to this, has a new idea, um, I want to encourage your dreaming. I want to encourage you to be able to act on it. And that's no small feat. That takes courage, right? Entrepreneurs are some of the most courageous people I know. And hats off to them for that. Even those who have, quote unquote, failed, as you said, they're going to learn and they're going to be able to add more to life. And so I think the biggest thing is to have um, appreciative inquiry, right? And be willing to ask questions, to be willing to investigate, to be willing to kind of go there. Um, And I think New Mexico Angels wants to do that with people. That's the bridge you're talking about. We can help people by listening. We can ask questions. um, And it helps if the entrepreneur is willing to kind of get drawn out and take those risks in relationships, Um, And I think it's really fair that if they show up with all of their earnestness in an appropriate way, politely asking questions, I think it's incumbent upon New Mexico Angels as an association and our members um, to try to help people out. And if it's not a fit for us, then there's many other resources. Our state does have some really good public and private resources to help people achieve their goals of what they're trying to do. Yeah. And, and that's something that, you know, it, it's so interesting to me because I, I talk to, you know, as I'm talking to people, everybody has, you know, and, it, you know, especially our age group, Drew, we, we have this desire to see, you know, we know if technology is used right, that it can literally change the globe. Yeah. And we have the ability, you know, and, and I, 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 whether it's 50 years or 70 years, you know, you hear all the scientists say, you know, different numbers and stuff like that. And then, you know, for, for me, it, 
all of a sudden it becomes this burden, you know, to um, not leave this to this, these, you know, two generations from now are going to have to deal with, you know, this horrificness that, that, you know, we've had capitalism without consciousness, you know? Yeah. And, you know, when, when I, and, and, and I don't know how you feel about it, but whenever I look at these, these young entrepreneurs and I, I look at new entrepreneurs coming in and they're having that ability to be able to listen and, and show humility and have say, how can I create a business that helps the community and helps the world? You know, those are things that, you know, I'm encouraged by, and those are the things that I want to be a part of, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, uh, let me see if I can like stick the landing with a really great final thing. Right. Um, from what you're saying. Um, so you were asking about resources before you were asking about the bridge and I, you know, I, I got to be the first CFO of Meow Wolf, right? And I'm really honored to have had that opportunity uh, to be the, the MBA amongst 100 artists. And one of the things that that group was incredibly talented at that I think is universal and points to what I'm, you're talking about is take a complex idea and make it simple and have a strong story behind it. And mm -hmm. if you're using business uh, to as a tool, right? Uh, to promote an idea, you need to do that. And the more, the better you can do that, the better other people can react in a genuine way. And so I think that's my biggest pearl uh, to everyone who's doing something to try to help our community, our state, our world be better, uh, because otherwise we're not going to be here in 50 years, as you say. Um, and so it's incumbent upon you to really work at your story, your personal story, this business story, and not in a false way, in a real way. Mm, yes, and yes. take what this is and how simply through images, how briefly can you communicate the power of what you're doing? And those who can do that, boy, they've really got something. And um, I'd love to talk to them. If you're just figuring that out, we can try to help you. Um, and that's what New Mexico Angels is here about. And we've got events on our website. We've got activities. And we're, we're here to be with others uh, because we can't do it by ourselves. I know. I love that, Drew. Thank you so much. I, I, before, before we go, I want everyone to be able to um, make sure that they get on the website and, and do a look. And, and you know, you have, there's different ways to support this. How are some of the, I, I, you know, I mean, whether they want to be an angel investor or sponsor, um, you know, at nmangels.com, how are some of the ways that people can be supportive of, of NM Angels? Yeah, the easiest thing is join our e-newsletter. Uh, we just restarted it after a year hiatus under COVID. So go to our website. You can sign up. Uh, and that way you can get our news. Uh, we're trying to be good about getting news out every couple of weeks, if not every month. So that's the easiest. Um, because we're going in, in a business circle, we're more on LinkedIn than we are anywhere else in social media. So uh, if you use LinkedIn, that's a great way for, to connect with us. Uh, and then uh, we're happy to come out and talk to a group or be part of an event. You're welcome to invite. We've got a couple of pitch events where businesses can present what they're doing through some of our partners, Rocky's Venture Club up in Colorado, and our friends down in Las Cruces with Arrowhead Innovation Fund. Uh, those dates are on our website. And uh, just invite us to something or reach out and tell us about what you're doing and communicate. You know, again, it's human connectivity. That's how we operate. That's awesome, Drew. I appreciate you being on the show, uh, and I want everybody to to sign up for the newsletter. If you're if this is an interest to you, if this is something that you want to be a part of, it's nmangels.com. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate you and your work. Thank you for joining us on the Albuquerque Business Podcast. And thanks, and thanks to our sponsor, RigbyDigital.com. Make sure to subscribe and share. And go to ABQPodcast.com. Get show notes, resources, and links to everything we talked about today to help you navigate your journey as an entrepreneur and business owner.